A very good morning and uh, welcome back for those that uh, went with us into the break. If you're just joining us from wherever you're watching, welcome to the segment of Morning at NTV. We shall be updating you on the latest developments in the world of business and this particular discussion is on the role of free zones in the country's export strategy. I'll be introducing my guests very shortly, but let me just first give you a preamble. Export development remains essential for Uganda's economic growth and transformation. Economic activity continues to be concentrated in low-value added activities and exports that offer a limited scope for qualitative increase in productivity, technology transfer linkages with global supply chains as well as job creation. Free zones offer an opportunity for Uganda to tackle these challenges in a way that promotes the nation in the space of a global competitiveness. I'm joined on set by Rebecca Nalumo Wamono. She is the Director of Business Development at the Uganda Free Zones Authority. Many thanks for joining us, lady. Thank you very much. How are we doing? Um, I'm fine. Thank you. All right, let's begin with uh, first things first. When I hear free zone, yeah, the mind goes free. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no right. doubt. But within the economic uh, structure, especially for export trade, what do free zones really present as an opportunity for any one country? Um, I'll, I'll start off by uh, telling our viewers and listeners mm. about the Free Zones Authority. That's right. We are a government agency that was established uh, in 2014 by the Free Zones Act uh, for the purpose of creating opportunities for export development and job creation. Mm -hmm. So we have a big mandate that involves the establishment, the development, management, maintenance, supervision and control of free zones. And I will break up this um, mandate in four ways. One, uh, we develop government-owned free zones by mm -hmm. ensuring that we provide customized infrastructure facilities on-site infrastructure, but also utilities to ensure mm. that uh, we lease out space to the private sector to export. Right. But we also lease out land uh, under the development mm. and uh, establishment mandate to private companies that want to promote export. Then uh, we also market and uh, promote uh, free zones, and these include uh, export processing zones of free ports. So much as government can establish or develop uh, free zones. Mm. We also allow, we create an environment where we allow private developers that have sites that want to establish these uh, free zones to also set up in these zones. Mm. Then we also advise government uh, on creating an enabling environment through incentives, through extension of infrastructure okay. to areas that have been established as uh, free zones. Mm. And also oversee, general overseeing of, of of the establishment of these free zones. Mm. So uh, your question was what, what role yeah, have we... Within yeah. the superstructure yes. of business, especially with regard to export. So um, our bigger role, I would say, among others, is in regulation, mm -hmm. in ensuring that uh, the environment that is created in the free zones is harmonized mm -hmm. with what uh, the other East African community partner states provide as far as free zones are concerned. Okay. So the bigger role that uh, we are doing right now is uh, we are constructing uh, the first public or government-owned free zone at Entebbe International Airport. Mm. So this particular zone uh, is going to provide pre-built factory units. Uh, we, we call it a plug and play, mm. where if you want to export through Entebbe International Airport, we give you space, then all you bring is your equipment. Oh. And uh, install this equipment and then process for export. Okay. So that's going to be the fa first public zone. But relatedly, within that facility, in addition to the industrial space that we shall be leasing out to the private sector, oh. we are also going to provide a one-stop uh, center at the airport so that all the free zones that uh, companies that are situated in that area can clear their goods on site. Mm. So it's going to be a government-owned uh, and facilitated facility where you we can have other government institutions, like uh, the Revenue Authority, mm. if you want to clear your goods, uh -huh. uh, both for importation and exportation. That's right. The National Bureau of Standards, if you want import inspections, Ministry of Agriculture, if you want inspectors uh, to, or 
to issue the certificate and, and for sanitary and phytosanitary services, they will be situated there. The other bigger uh, product that is going to be provided there is cold storage. Mm. You know, one of the, the challenges we have mm. uh, is quality yeah. of goods that are exported out. The ability out. for the product to reach yes. the market in its good yes. and quality condition. So we shall provide dedicated cold storage facilities, which will also complement the, the infrastructure that is already there. The, then in addition to that, uh, the other role that uh, we, we have played is um, we've also acquired uh, pieces of land countrywide where we intend to provide or lease out space mm. to private companies that want to set up. We have one of our projects that is coming up in, in Nakaseke. The area is called uh, Kaweweta. Mm. It's going to be a um, multi-purpose or multi-model public or government-owned free zones, which in size it's, it's 11,000, over 11,000 acres in size. So we shall be wow. providing on-site, on-site yeah. infrastructure, we shall be providing utilities, we shall do the feasibility and master planning of the area so mm -hmm. that we have companies that are dedicated to manufacturing for export to be situated there. That's right. But also, of course, we, we do not only expect industries there, mm -hmm. but also uh, agro-processing activities, uh, livestock activities, and, and services will also be provided in there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, but uh, very interesting, but most importantly, eye-opening, especially for many of the people who are dealing in export and continue to grapple with uh, the problems including cold storage. Let me keep at cold storage. Why? Because most people who want to export, especially uh, green stuff, there are those who want to export flowers to Europe, there's also fish. We've had stories of uh, inability to uh, put these products to the market when they are still fresh. When it comes to the facilities, how big are they? Because storage is really very important. Somebody might come with a ton and they can't be accommodated. So just be a little more specific about um, the capacities. Um, in, in terms of uh, the, the current capacity, mm. the current capacity at the airport is around uh, 300, close to 300, between 300 and 500 metric tons. Metric tons, yeah. And uh, okay. what the size of one of the cold storage facilities that we are putting up is, uh, in mm. terms of space, is mm. around 780 square meters. Okay. So we anticipate that uh, exporters of hot culture products, mm. largely fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetables. And also, we are also looking at uh, possibilities of attracting uh, those who are dealing in beef processing and also uh, dairy. Mm will also use, utilize these services. But uh, I would say that um, we, we've done, we, in partnership with our stakeholders, we've done a feasibility study, which is largely pointing to the horticulture industry. Mm -hmm. So I would say that the particular uh, cold storage facility that we provide will target those who are in the horticulture industry. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Now, the global economy is a mixed bag, and of course, there are many headwinds that uh, economies are trying to grapple with in order to stay uh, within line. Going forward, the Uganda Free Zones Authority must be cooking, and I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that we must be able to look at uh, in order to boost exports. Have you been sharing any of that that perhaps you haven't? Yes. Um, maybe I'll, I'll just start by saying that um, currently we have uh, 40. 41 companies mm. that uh, we have licensed to operate uh, in the free zones. Okay. And uh, in terms of the impact we have, we have over 11,000 workers mm. in the free zones. And as we stand uh, the free zones by end of uh, the financial year 20 to 23, free zones accounted for 9% of the exports out, out of Uganda. Mm. So we note that, um, of course, in the last, I would say, 10 years of our operation, the, the free zone scheme has gladly been driven by the private sector. Yeah. So as government, we want to go into this scheme uh, by investing in the infrastructure, but also creating a more enabling environment mm -hmm. in the scheme. And what do I mean by this? Uh, the legal, the current policy legal framework mm -hmm. of free zones is largely in Uganda. We are currently promoting the export processing zone mm -hmm. and also the free port. An export processing zone is basically an area that uh, is gazetted mm. uh, so that you can manufacture or process your goods without paying import duty and taxes. That's right. 
So, but um, we expect that uh, once you're licensed in this scheme, we want you to export more than 20%, more than 80%, sorry, of what you're producing in this, in this uh, export processing zone. Then uh, we also have a free port which gives you similar be benefits, but it's largely for storage purposes, warehousing and storage for re-export. Mm -hmm. So we are in the process of reviewing the legal and policy framework okay. uh, for, for the free zones. Mm -hmm. So we are now moving into other types of economic zones. We call them the special economic zones. Mm -hmm. So I would say that uh, in the medium term, uh, the first step, especially as far as implementing the bigger zones, the 11,000 acre zone we are talking about, we are going to revise the law. Okay. We are going to amend the law so that we can accommodate other types of zones like agricultural zones, mm. livestock zones, ICT zones, science and technology zones, to mention but a few. Mm. So with this scheme, we anticipate that uh, it will create a more flexible scheme that allows more private developers to come mm. into yeah. outside just manufacturing for export. All right. Thanks. Rebecca Nalumo Wamono, Director of Business Development at Uganda Free Zones Authority. Many thanks for sharing the perspective and also emboldening our understanding of how free zones operate. My man, Stephen Mbide, is on.